Hey everyone, it's Mark here, your go-to e-bike tester and expert. Today I'm sharing the 11 things I wish I knew before buying my first e-bike. These are the hard-earned lessons, the stuff they don't tell you in the brochures. Whether you're a newbie or a seasoned rider, these tips will help you make a more informed decision. Buying an e-bike is a big investment, so you want to make sure you're getting the right one for your needs and budget. We're talking everything from battery life and motor power to safety and legal considerations. Let's get started. Some e-bikes have throttles, just like a motorcycle. Instant power, no pedaling required. A throttle lets you ride without pedaling at all, which can be great for quick commutes or giving your legs a break. But throttles drain your battery faster. You might run out to juice um, halfway. Additionally, um, some regions treat throttle e-bikes like mopeds, requiring registration or insurance. Throttles aren't legal everywhere. Check local regulations before buying. Battery size is crucial when it comes to e-bikes. More watt hours mean further travel. Think of it like your car's gas tank. For long rides, aim for 500 watt hours. Less and you might pedal home. Range anxiety is real and nobody wants to be stranded. However, battery size also affects weight. So larger batteries can make your e-bike heavier and harder to transport. Knowing your daily commute or trip length helps ensure you won't get stuck pedaling a heavy bike home with no power. Research and get a big enough battery. E-bike motors come in different sizes measured in watts. More watts mean more power, but it's not just about speed. Higher wattage makes climbing hills easier. On flat terrain, 250 watts might be enough. For hills or heavy loads, consider 500 or 750 watts. However, higher wattage doesn't always mean faster speeds. Most e-bikes are limited to 20-28 miles per hour depending on the class. Next up is frame size. Just like regular bikes, e-bikes come in different frame sizes. Getting the right fit is essential for comfort and safety. A bike that's too big or too small can lead to back pain, knee pain, and even accidents. It's not just about height either. Your inseam and riding style also influence the right size. For example, mountain e-bikes generally have a more bent over seating position and compact frame for better control on rough terrain, while city e-bikes may have a more relaxed, upright geometry for comfort. Check the manufacturer's sizing guide or visit a local bike shop to get a professional fitting. So ask yourself, what am I going to be using this e-bike for 90% of the time? A comfortable ride is a happy ride. Next is charging time. E-bike batteries take time to charge. Most batteries take several hours to fully charge, sometimes even overnight. Factor this into your riding plans. Invest in a fast charger if you need to top up quickly, but frequent fast charging can shorten the lifespan of your battery. Lithium ion batteries, which most e-bikes use, can catch fire, especially if they're damaged or improperly charged. Buy from reputable brands that prioritize safety and follow the charging instructions carefully. Never leave your battery charging unattended, especially overnight. Be smart, be safe, and protect yourself and your property. E-bike laws vary depending on where you live. Some places treat e-bikes like regular bicycles, while others have specific regulations for different classes of e-bikes. For example, in the US, e-bikes are typically divided into three classes. Class 1, pedal assist only, with a max speed of 20 miles per hour. Class 2, throttle assisted, max speed of 20 miles per hour. Class 3, pedal assist, max speed of 28 miles per hour, but no throttle. Check local laws before buying to avoid fines or legal trouble. You don't want to get pulled over by the police and slapped with a fine. E-bikes come in different styles, each with its own riding position. Riding an e-bike for long periods can be tiring if the bike doesn't suit your posture. Unlike traditional bikes where pedaling dictates your position, e-bikes allow you to ride at higher speeds, making your comfort even more critical. Whether you prefer an upright riding position, common with city or cruiser e-bikes, or a more aggressive forward-leaning stance, common with road or mountain e-bikes, will greatly affect your comfort. Think about what's comfortable for you, especially if you're planning on longer rides. A comfortable riding position will make a world of difference in how much you enjoy your e-bike. Cost, the hidden expenses. E-bikes are an investment, but the initial purchase price is just the beginning. Factor in the cost of maintenance, replacement parts, and accessories. This is the true cost of an e-bike. Things like tires, brakes, and batteries will need to be replaced eventually. 
So high quality parts and good customer service is going to be key here. E-bikes are faster and heavier than regular bikes, which means they can be more dangerous if you're not careful. Always wear a helmet and other protective gear. Ride defensively and be aware of your surroundings. Safety first. Not all e-bikes are created equal when it comes to weather resistance. Check the manufacturer's specifications before riding in the rain. Even if your bike is water resistant, it's best to avoid deep puddles. Protect your investment and keep your e-bike dry. Let me know what you think. Have you bought an e-bike before? Let me know your experience. I would love to hear about it. I get back to everyone in the comments. If you need further help, I put together a detailed guide for beginners looking to buy their first e-bike. You can download it in the link below. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more e-bike content. Ride safe and see you next time. Thanks for watching.